Greetings and welcome. This is Rajiv Makni on the Gadget 360 show and we start our show today with the Nikon Z30. Now this is a camera that they've primarily made for vloggers, video content creators who are just starting out. It is one notch above smartphones in terms of the video you will get, great color reproduction, crystal clear footage, supports good 4K shooting and it's quite affordable. Just the body though costs about 60,000 rupees. The lenses is something you have to additionally purchase. I think I've given you more or less of the review, right? But we'll talk a little bit more in detail later. We'll also move on to the Realme flat monitor. Four is into desktop computing space for the first time. Pretty affordable daily use monitor, premium design, great build quality, amazing display. Refresh rate, okay, 75 hertz, so it's not a gaming monitor. You're not going to buy it for that. Then on to something which I really have not used, but every other person around me who's used it has gone gaga over it. The Dyson Air app comes with major upgrades. Looks like hair done professionally, available in three options for different hair lengths and textures, ease of use, a little pricey at 45,900, but we got people at our own team to use it. And we'll end it all with the OnePlus Nord Bud CE, semi-in-ear design, gap between the tips and the eardrum. There is no noise cancellation in this, but good snug fit. You can wear it comfortably for hours. Connects to the Hey Melody app that comes with this product. So lots to do on the show. Let's get started. All right, our big review, our top story is the latest launch by Nikon, the APS-C image sensor camera that they've come out. A lot of companies have started doing this, taking out fairly good entry-level cameras and saying it's targeted towards vloggers, video content creators. This is exactly what this is. So it's got a microphone jack, no headphone socket, which is okay. I mean, I would love to have that also to monitor it, but this is more for a one-person army. Fantastic in terms of what it will give you as output. 4K UHD, 30 frames per second, can record continuously for nearly two hours. But it's a little pricey. I mean, you know, when a vlogger is starting out, they want the 30, 40,000 stuff. This with the lens is around 75,000 rupees. Nikon recently launched the latest Nikon Z30. This is the third APS-C sensor model to be launched by the company. Nikon made its debut with this sensor in October 2019 with the Z50. With this latest entrant, Nikon is targeting vloggers and video content creators who are looking for a lightweight, portable camera that is better than their smartphones. In our review, we tell you whether Nikon clicks with this latest model. The Nikon Z30 is a good-looking camera. The design language is consistent with the previous Z models, albeit with minor changes. The Z30 does not have an electronic viewfinder. Unlike other EVF-less cameras where you can attach the viewfinder via the hot shoe, one cannot do that on the Nikon. The back of the camera houses the touchscreen. Since the Z30 is a smaller, more compact device, the display is also a bit small at 3.0 inches. You can flip the display out and rotate it up and down or flip it around to use it as a selfie screen. Keeping the audience in mind, this feature is extremely useful for vloggers who would like to see themselves while recording. The Z30 has a single SD card slot which supports ultra high speed 1 and not 2. Apart from that, there is a USB-C port, a Type-D micro HDMI connector and a stereo mini pin jack. The Nikon uses an ENEL25 lithium-ion battery and lasts slightly more than an hour of shooting video content. The no EVF is not the only change Nikon has made to the Z30. There is also no joystick for controlling the focus. One can use the touchscreen or the directional pad for the same. Finally, coming to the photo and video prowess of the camera. The Nikon Z30 uses the same 20.9 APS-C image sensor as the previous Nikon Z50 and ZFC. Though the sensor might be on the verge of being slightly dated, the image quality is still spectacular. The camera records full resolution images at up to 11 frames per second. Without the UHS-2, the images won't process swiftly but the quality of the images more than make up for that. The Z30 uses a hybrid phase detection autofocus system, meaning it works well in low light. The camera includes 209 focus points and numerous autofocus modes. It also includes wide area autofocus for tracking people and animals. Unlike other DX format Z series cameras, the Z30 does not have an in body image stabilization or IBIS. It, however, features an electronic vibration reduction. This works by discarding pixels via 1.3x crop to maintain stability. The EVR helps keep static shots steady, but if there is any movement in the video like pans, tilts or walking, 
the electronic VR fails to stand its ground. It does smooth the movement slightly but adds a jump to the visual. It is advised to use a tripod or a gimbal to get those steady videos. The Nikon Z30 is capable of recording 4K Ultra HD video at 30 frames per second. Full HD videos can be recorded at 120 frames per second. It is capable of outputting 4K uncropped footage. We were happy with the video quality of the Nikon Z30. The footage was sharp and clean with good dynamic range. If you're just getting into vlogging and video content creation, the Nikon Z30 is a great camera with all the bells and whistles to make your video recording experience enjoyable. The Z30 is a video-centric, affordable mirrorless camera that is well-built and capable of producing good quality visuals for your vlogs. Priced at Rs 73,495 with the 1650mm lens, this is definitely on our list of recommendations. All right, let's move on now to a flat screen monitor from Realme. This is the first time Realme is getting into this segment. It's affordable daily use monitor. Can be used as a secondary monitor if you like. Nice display in terms of nice brightness to it. 23.8 inches FHD display. It can be used for casual gaming. That's what Realme says. I would say absolutely not. 8 millisecond respond. How can you game on it? 250 nits of peak brightness is good. 100% sRGB color space is good. 3000 to 1 contrast ratio is good. Price point is great, around 10,000 rupees. After making a mark for itself in the smartphone, smartwatches and the TWS segment, Realme is now forayed into the desktop computing space with its latest launch, the Realme Flat Monitor. Realme is marketing it as an affordable daily use monitor that is great for your work from home setup. In our review, we tell you whether the monitor ticks all the right boxes or there is much left to be desired. Right as you unbox the device, it comes across as a good-looking monitor. The display is bezel-less on three sides and has a slightly thicker chin giving it a very premium look. Although the design is a pretty standard fare, it does take your work setup a notch higher. It has a slim design with a thickness measuring 6.9 mm. It has a great build quality even if it belongs to the budget segment. The finish of the monitor is near perfect with no gaps and uneven seams. Another great feature of the monitor is the joystick at the back. It doubles up as the power on and off button. The basic menu of the monitor can be controlled via this. You can tilt the monitor back to a point. Coming to the ports of the monitor, it comes with four port options. It comes with an HDMI 1.4 port, USB Type-C port, DC port and VGA port. We did miss a display port or a second HDMI port, but being a budget monitor, we know that some compromises have been made. Coming to the display of the monitor, it comes with a 23.8 inch FHD display and a 75 Hz refresh rate. Thanks to the high refresh rate, playing games and using the monitor has been a smooth experience. Realme has provided a VA panel on the monitor and you will have to compromise on the view and angles. Set the monitor at eye level for that perfect color reproduction. Another plus that Realme has provided is an anti-glare display. Thanks to the 250 nits of peak brightness, watching content and using the desktop for everyday tasks has been top-notch. The colors look bright and vibrant because of the 100% sRGB color space. The contrast ratio is 3000 is to 1, which is amazing. While playing Valorant, we did see a slight difference thanks to the 75Hz refresh rate. The experience was smooth, however, the 8 millisecond response time is on the higher side. The Realme monitor cannot be called a gaming monitor, but for casual gaming, the monitor does its job. Another drawback of the Realme monitor is that it does not come with inbuilt speakers. So if you work with a lot of audio, you will need to connect your own speakers. Overall, the Realme flat monitor is good as a secondary monitor for your work from home setup or for your casual gaming setup. Great display and a premium design add to the charm of the product. The monitor is priced at Rs 12,999 but will be available at Rs 10,999 as part of the introductory offer. If you are looking for a secondary monitor on a budget, our suggestion would be to check this one out.
Let's move on now to what could be a revolution and to a lot of people could save you a lot of money, the Dyson Airwrap. All new revamped Airwrap, major upgrades from the previous model. It comes with three options for different hair lengths and textures. Updated paddle brushes. So it's a Dyson, but it's premiumly priced at 45,900 rupees. A lot of people say definitely worth the price tag. You know who added that? The Gadget360 team. Hi, I'm Rubina Mungia. Now, there are a very few products I trust with taming my hair. The Dyson Airwrap has been a constant companion for me for over a few years now. And even today, the simplicity of and ingenuity of the technology behind this lifestyle product looks like magic to me. So when Dyson announced that it has a new and updated air app out, I was excited, intrigued, but most importantly, curious if I should splurge a small fortune on it. This is the new Dyson air app multi styler 2022, the next generation of the legendary air app that has changed styling practices for women and even some long hair totting men. Of course, it offers advancement in technology and performance. But is it worth the upgrade from the original and should you spend 45,000 rupees on this hairstyler? That's what I needed to know. Dyson doesn't believe in changing a winning formula and it will be hard to distinguish the new air app from the old one for all but the most diehard fans. It's what inside that matters and the technology is all new. In fact, so are the attachments. Time to brush up on your physics because here's how the Dyson Airwrap works. The upgraded Airwrap multi-styler uses an aerodynamic phenomena called the Coanda effect. The fluid mechanical effect ensures when air flows along a solid surface, it follows the curvature of the surface instead of just separating it out. That blowing vortex of air generated by an impeller blade spinning at over 1 lakh revolutions per minute ensures a stronger wraparound effect of hair around the surface of the air wrap. Behind the scenes is an upgraded V9 motor that ensures strong airflow and a tighter grip. Heat is the enemy of healthy hair and part of the appeal of the Dyson Air Wrap is its ability to keep heat damage to a minimum. The surface temperature of the heating element stays well below 150 degrees and precise control means that your hair keep fresh and alive even after multiple uses. So that was your physics lesson for the day but now let's talk about the changes outside. The new Dyson Airwrap shifts with two new attachments and rework brushes. The round brush attachment remains the same. The one that will immediately however catch your attention is the complicated sounding Quanda smoothing hair dryer. Quanda attachment replaces the older dryer attachment and is responsible for drying your hair from wet to damp in a matter of minutes. Switch over to the smoothing mode and the air wrap will make quick work of flyways. Can you see the difference? The brush too have gotten a series of refinements to give them more control. The stronger motor combined with the upgraded brushes ensure that you spend less time smoothing out your hair and more time looking glamorous. Next up are the styling barrels which now have a cool rotating tip. Now this cool tip can change the direction of the airflow and is a big upgrade over the previous generation. The Dyson Airwrap is an ingenious addition to every long haired person's arsenal. A single attachment makes it easy to curl up your tresses clockwise or anti-clockwise. Priced at 45,900 rupees, there's no denying that the Airwrap is a premium product with a nosebleed price attached to it. However, it stands tall as one of the few products on the market that can give you the salon experience at home. Although, if you already own the original Airwrap, there's very little reason for you to upgrade. However, the new accessories can be attached with your old Airwrap, the original Airwrap, and you can look at purchasing them separately. Let's take a quick break right now on the show when we come back, lots more.
Let's move on now to the OnePlus Nord Buds CE. Small, compact, IPX4 rating. Does not have noise cancellation, but still actually with the way it fits, it does cancel out a lot of the noise. Great sound profile, absolutely fantastic. Clean, clear vocals, good bass, 13.4 mm drivers, and pretty good battery life too. Priced at about 2,000 rupees. The market is flooded with affordable TWS right now. From JBL to Oppo, the consumer has a plethora of options to choose from. The latest entrant is the OnePlus Nord Bud CE facing stiff competition. The Bud CE packs a punch with its specs and we tell you whether it is worth your while. Right out of the box, the OnePlus Nord Bud CE have a distinctive look. They are small and compact and fit snugly into your pockets. They are lightweight as well. The case weighs around 3.5 grams while the buds weigh 33 grams. The buds come with an IPX4 rating against sweat and water. The buds come with a semi-in-ear design. It doesn't sit too deep inside the ear canal and the buds can be used for hours without any discomfort. Despite not coming with a rubber tip, the buds fit cosily. Now, being a semi-in-ear bud, the distance between the buds and eardrums means that one has to listen to music at more than 50% volume. The buds do not come with noise cancellation and it will not be the best experience using these on flights or in a crowded area. Now, coming to the sound profile of the Bud CE and that is something to write home about. The 13.4mm drivers deliver a great sound experience. The Hey Melody app allows you to choose from four modes, bass, balance, serenade and gentle. It also has a game mode to customize your listening experience. Listening to music was an absolute delight. The vocals were clean and the instruments were layered. If you are someone who loves listening to audiobooks and podcasts, Find a quiet corner to enjoy the experience because due to the gap there was ambient sound that marred the experience slightly. The call quality on the Bud CE was slightly grainy and again the gap did not help in the audio levels. We had to constantly adjust the levels for a decent experience. OnePlus has not provided any fancy features on the Bud CE. One can change tracks and answer calls by double tapping the buds. The buds themselves sport a 27mAh battery and can last up to 9-10 to 10 hours of normal usage. OnePlus claims that playback lasts up to 4.5 hours and combined playback is up to 20 hours. It comes with flash charge and the case will charge up to 50% in about 15 minutes. Priced at 2,299 rupees, it does not come with fancy features and neither does it have ANC, but it gives you your money's worth and therefore makes it to a list of recommendations. That then was the Gadget 360 show with me, Rajiv Makhni. Do tune in next week. I've got a fantastic lineup of stuff to show you.